Hello everyone and welcome to Reader's Workshop. Even though I can't be there with you today, I'm so glad that we can meet in our play posit today to go through our word work and our um, reading mini lesson together. So today we're going to talk in word study about um, figurative language. And sometimes words mean what they literally say. And sometimes words don't exactly mean what you see in the sentence. So we're going to look at some examples together and you're going to help me decide um, what word is being used in kind of a way that makes sense but can't lit be taken literally. So if we look at this first sentence, the first sentence says, the curtains blocked the sunlight, keeping the room dark and cool. The second sentence says, the horizon was hidden behind curtains of rain. So if we think about these two sentences, the first one, we can tell that there are literally curtains hanging blocking out sunlight, keeping the room cool and dark. But here, there aren't actual curtains made of rain outside. It just looks like there are curtains of rain because it's raining so hard, it's blocking some of the view. So curtains here has two different meanings, and one of them we can take literally, and the other one, not so much. So if we look at this sentence, I want you to think about which word is in both of these sentences and how it has different meanings. So I'm going to read both of these sentences. I want you to write the word that has different meanings in these sentences in the play posit. Let's do that now. The hikers stopped at the fork to check their trail map. The second one says, place the fork on the left side of the plate. Which word do you see in both sentences that means different things? Go ahead and enter that into play posit now. If you selected fork, you're right. So if we think about this first fork here, we've got stopped at the fork to check their trail map. Is there an actual fork in the road? No, there's just kind of two directions that they can choose from. There's not an actual eating fork in the road. So that is an example of figurative language. But here, place the fork on the left side of the plate. You actually can place that fork on the left side of your plate. We're actually talking about a real fork. So in word study rotation today, you're going to get a chance to think about literal meanings and figurative leaning, meanings of words and try to decide if it is actually a word um, where we can think about it literally or a word where we can think about it figuratively. I'm excited to see the thinking you have in that word study rotation. The next thing we're going to do now is we're going to move into our uh, mini lesson. So for mini lesson today, we're going to continue our conversation about theme. And as you all remember, I'm sure, theme is when we have one or two words that really describes the entire book. And so today we're going to talk specifically about how readers make connections among texts that have the same theme. So a lot of times books that we read really relate to each other when we think about theme. So you might have a big selection of books about friendship that you've read before. Or you might have a big selection of books about family that you've read before. I know I can think of a bunch of different themes that I see in a lot of different books. So today we're going to compare um, two sets of books and we're going to decide if we can think of any themes that they share because sometimes they share the same theme. So we're going to think about these two sets of books. We're going to think about A Symphony of Wales and A Boy and a Whale, those two books together. And then we're going to think about Barbed Wire Baseball and Strong to the Hoop together. And we're going to try together to think about what themes both books have in common. And remember, they're one or two words. Themes are one or two words that really describe what the whole book's about. Okay? So, if we think about these two books. Just as a quick reminder, Symphony of Wales is about a girl um, who lives in a place where um, it's very cold and there are um, big sheets of ice um, around her. And for whatever reason, a bunch of whales get stuck inside an area where there's really thick ice and they're trapped there. And her family and her group of people that she lives with contact an icebreaker to come and they have a really challenging time getting these whales out, but they eventually do. So that's what happened in Symphony of Whales. The Boy and the Whale over on the right, remember this is the book of 
um, the dad and boy who were very poor um, and used fishing nets um, to collect fish and sell. And that was kind of how they lived. Um, and they went out to check on one of their nets. And when they did that, it was caught inside, or a whale was caught inside of it. And the dad was really upset because nets are very expensive and he was worried about how they were going to survive. Um, but the boy was really worried about the whale. And he wanted to make sure, even though his dad said not to, to free that whale, even though it was dangerous and going to be difficult. So I'm wondering, what theme could work for both of these books? Enter that into play posit. What theme could work for both of these books? And then I'll tell you what my thinking is. All right, here's my thinking. For a Symphony of Whales and a Boy and a Whale, I feel like empathy would be a really great um, theme for these books because the, the characters really care about the animals and really feel for the animals. And then kindness as well, because they're constantly showing kindness to those whales and to the animals. I think there's many others that you could have chosen, like hard work, determination, um, or caring. You might even have some that I didn't mention, but those would all work as themes for the text. Let's look at the next two. Let's look at Barbed Wire Baseball and Strong to the Hoop. Just as a quick summary, Barbed Wire Baseball is about this, um, this group of people who are um, stuck in a camp. Remember back during um, Pearl Harbor, this, the Vietnam people who were living here, Vietnamese people that were living here in the United States um, were no longer trusted. And they put them in camps. And they loved baseball very much, but they didn't have it at the internment camp that they were in. So they had to build their own barbed wire baseball stadium. And you'll remember that it took a lot of time and a lot of hard work for them to accomplish this goal, but they finally were able to do that. And then with Strong to the Hoop, we had our main character who was much younger than the people at the main court, but one of them got hurt and he was suddenly able to play in the game. And it's something he'd always dreamed of being able to do. And he was finally going to be able to do that. And he decided that he was going to play and he was going to play hard. So he showed a lot of determination, worked really hard at um, being the best he could be while he was playing, and his team actually won, and he was able to play in the next round um, with his teammates. So if you think about both of these books, what theme do you think could work for both of these books? Enter that into play, pause it, and then we'll look together. All right, here we go. You could have said Perseverance. Perseverance works really well for these books because both of them show people working hard for something they believe in. And then hope as well. Barbed Wire Baseball shows us that we can have a lot of hope um, when things are not great. And that Barbed Wire Baseball Stadium showed um, that they can hope for a better future. And then Strong to the Hoop, um, it showed that the main character could hope to play with bigger kids and to be successful in playing with others. So we could see that that was a really helpful um, and hopeful experience for the main character. You might have come up with some other ones that are great and I'm excited to read those soon. So the main idea today is that many different books can have the exact same theme. So a lot of times you can read three books and they might all have that same theme um, throughout those three books. Today during your read to self time, you are welcome to read to self, but I also want to give you time to catch up on your biography chapters and writing. So if you feel like you want to work in your folder and add more writing to it, that is awesome. If you just want to read, that is okay too, but you can take, you can take the choice of either one of those during your read to self time. You still need to do your word study rotation. So make sure you complete that word study rotation because I'll be checking in on that. And then you will be having interactive read aloud today. Um, this will be after rotation one and you'll get to read City of Ember, a little bit more of C uh, City of Ember. 
at the very end of Reader's Workshop today, you will be cleaning up and going to lunch and recess. We're so excited to see um, the work that you complete. And I'm excited to look back at this play posit to see what your thinking was. I hope that you have a great Reader's Workshop. I hope that you are, first of all, being respectful. Second, staying in your seat. Third, staying on schedule. And fourth, keeping your voice off. It's important that you do those things so that everyone can have a successful Reader's Workshop. Please be thinking about others because when you make a choice, you can affect other people with a poor choice or a good choice. So I hope you have a great Reader's Workshop and I will see you all in person for Reader's Workshop tomorrow.